Hello people of the verse and welcome to the channel, it's the Erratic Hero here and in this video we'll be talking about uh, thrusters tuning, ships and power triangle update, it was a post on robberspaceindustries.com in the forums and uh, this is what we will be uh, discussing. Now before we do that, please check out Uncle Phil Machimina's channel, he's sponsoring this month's giveaway and uh, we need to send him a little bit of love so please help me out by subscribing to his channel, tell him Erad sent you, that would be really fantastic. guys. Let's see what's going on here. They say that uh, basically CIG is telling us to keep in mind that this is just the very first step in the wider combat balancing. So I think that over the next couple of patches, we should see more changes like uh, those that we're going to see in Star Citizen of 3.14, which are already quite important. The way that you were flying the ship in 3.14 is completely different. I saw a lot of remarks in some of my gameplay videos where I was doing a little bit of dogfighting. Like you can see in the Bureau footage right now, people say, oh, you rather, it's so painful to watch you. What do you watch you fly your ship? This is not how you fly your ship. Like, dude, they completely change everything. I ask people in the <laughs> I ask people in the comment section, dude, have you tried the 3.14? And they say, oh um, no. There you go, right? <laughs> exactly. So please keep in mind, guys, that the way ships are flown in 3.14 are completely different. People suggest that maybe using VTOL thrusters would help. So that's something that we'll be uh, trying next time I get into the verse. I don't have so much time uh, during the week because I work too hard. Uh, but uh, <laughs> during the weekend, I'll definitely be checking this out for sure. Now let's say that the the aim is to achieve a workable architect uh, architect Archety archetypal what archety I've never seen this word before archetypal class balance for our fighters that will serve as a solid foundation for further de development of subsequent patches after 3.14 each ship can be balanced according to its in-game and in-fiction role without disturbing the overall combat experience of the game so does that mean guys does that mean that we will be able to balance our own ship or is it going to be CIG balancing their own ship because I would love also to have some kind of customization I mean there already is we can already buy different components but if we customize the ships in game with different components is it going to also modify a little bit the behavior of those ships that is also something that I would like to know now here are the design goals here for thrusters tuning here they do say that the maximum g-force acting on pallet should roughly reflect what human can uh, humans can injure so they want to be a little bit more realistic on whether or not uh, human players are going to be blacking out or not sometimes I do feel I do have a feeling that we do black out a little bit too much uh, maybe uh, this is going to make our characters a little bit more resistant they also want to avoid nose to nose combat ship or peep wiggling and movement scripts uh, especially nose to nose combat ship is really annoying it's like uh, you know I'm facing a ship and uh, the other guy is also facing me and we're just shooting each other like that using six degrees of freedom that's the problem when you're using six degrees of freedom because of course people are going to be having nose to nose combat ship so CIG have been actively trying to avoid doing that to have more World War II style type of uh, gameplay without removing the six degrees of freedom too and uh, so far I gotta say that it has been kind of effective uh, for me at least while uh, playing with NPCs but I am yet to try this in PvP so I still don't know the effectiveness here or uh, of CIG's uh, measure to remove nose-to-nose uh, -nose combat. They also want to turn Afterburner into some kind of boost here which should be used tactically and is also managed by the power triangle. I suppose that this is happening if you put more power to the engines then you can have more boost available now here is the outcome they tuned each ship towards their intended role which is fantastic uh, because um, the, the idea is that there shouldn't be a ship that, that should be superior to the other each ship has its own pros and cons and uh, this wasn't the case before this means that tuning ships to fit within an expected performance envelope for the use cases they were designed for uh, while having clear pros and cons, something that we've been talking about uh, just before, right? So for simplicity, during uh, this ongoing balancing process, we will use basic fighter archetype classes. So they are using light fighters, interceptors slash interdictors, medium fighters, and heavy fighters. So according to them, light fighters should excel at 1v1 dogfights and swarm tactics, which does make sense because 
One, in, if you are in a 1v1 dogfight, uh, if you are playing against fighters or ships that are heavier, you should easily be able to add maneuver them, flank them, and that's how you are going to be destroying them. And swarm tactic also makes sense. Think of Star Wars, where you have you know dozens of TIE fighters surrounding you. You know those ships, they're not durable at all. This is exactly what they say as well. Here, low durability for those ships. But if there's a ton of them at the same time shooting at a single target, then they are going to be doing a lot of damage too. And that is the whole idea. They are going also going to have the highest agility. They're going to excel at lateral acceleration and they do have a high rotation rate, but it's also going to boost. Um, the boost is also going to affect mostly lateral accelerations. Now here, the um, the, the interceptors are going to be a little bit different. So for light fighters, we're talking we're talking about light fighters. The arrows, for example, is probably going to include as well the Merlins. We're probably talking about the Aurora LN. We're talking about the um, the Mustang as well. So these kind of smaller type of vessel. Now the interdictors, what's more like the M50, for example, definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely those kind of ships. Maybe the Mantis, maybe, probably the Mantis as well. I know it's, it's good. Maybe a medium piece, a bit bigger as well. Anyway, uh, so here these interceptors excel at forward acceleration, uh, so they're more like uh, you know, going going straight. They have low durability, just like the light fighters, and they carry specialized equipment. So maybe they are going to have scatter guns, or maybe they are going to have, um, like maybe the as I mentioned the the mantis. They're going to have the interdiction, uh, the interdiction device that's going to stop people from uh, leaving or entering uh, quantum travel. They are also going to have the fastest acceleration uh, agility and their boost is also moving uh, forward acceleration. So these are going to be the ship that should be engaging the enemy first until the light fighters and the medium and medium fighters come. Their, uh, their strength here with those interceptors is to go straight and go fast. <laughs> Next, the medium factors, the medium fighters, sorry, uh, they excel at loadout flexibility due to more hard points and equipment choices. So these are going to be the ships that maybe are going to have some ballistic weapons. Now, ballistic weapons are going to be completely different. As you guys know, we've been talking about a lot, a lot on the channel. Ballistic weapons are going to have low ammo, but they're going to be uh, extremely powerful. So I think that the idea for, uh, that's something that I've said, uh, probably the, the idea for uh, ballistic weapons is to use them as a last resort when you think this is going to be my last chance if I want to be killing that target or people have been saying also in the comment section that it would be a great alpha strike type of weapon you really want to inflict as much damage as possible from head on why not that also could be a, a good idea I haven't thought about it but yeah it definitely makes sense now these medium fighters are going to be not as agile as the other fighters something that you can see right here as I'm flying a, a cutlass uh, cutlass slightly between medium and heavy fighters I think they're going to uh, more towards the heavy fighters with the cutlass we're going to talk about it a little bit later right uh, they so they're not really uh, agile the durability is uh, average but uh, also uh, the way they boost is on all axes equally whereas the heavy fighters though uh, excel at prolonged combat and they are able to take multiple ships at the same time something that the light fighters interceptors and even medium fighters should not be doing so well especially the light fighters they should be the only fighter class capable of equipping mined turrets so that's what I said they are going to reclassify the cutlass into a heavy fighter which explains the Poor agility here. Those heavy fighters should have poor agility. That's why it's really hard to be flying this cutlass. And people say, you right. why, why do you fly? You don't know how to fly your cutlass. It's because it has poor agility. It is the design from CIG. That's exactly what they're saying in this post that I'll put the description of in the comment section down below, by the way. And uh, the boosts are also affecting all axes equally. Now, speaking of boosts here, uh, they said that they have reworked uh, the boost uh, to offer only a brief uh, advantage and to discourage the constant use, which is true. I personally only use boost if I want to be going towards a certain type of vector as quickly as possible, or if I want to also escape from an engagement. That's, that, that's why I would use the boost, but that's pretty much it. The amount of boost available is detected by the thrust capacitor charge so that's something that we can see 
uh, on the on the there's a little uh, there's a little gauge on the left side of the of the UI. That's that's the boost there. Heat is no longer the short term limitation. Thank you, finally, because <laughs> that was really annoying in the previous iterations of Star Citizen. And they need a minimum capacitor charge to engage and suffers from a regen delay after use, which means that if you want to be using your boost a lot, for example, if you want to be using your boost when you want to be leaving an atmosphere, you're gonna have to put, for example, all the powers to your engine and then you'll be able to use it uh, more and maybe you'll be able to exit atmosphere a little bit quicker. Maybe that could be an interesting video for a test. Uh, also, engaging doesn't force an intent instant reaction from your ship. It needs to spool up a short time before engaging. That's interesting. So if you press boost, it's not going to be doing it immediately. Uh, it also affects rotational acceleration, which is very useful on bigger ship that is also correct i have uh, this is something that i do with the cutlass for example if i want to turn a little bit quickly the boost is definitely working very well the space brake does not automatically enable boost anymore although you can change this in the options menu now when it comes to ships here uh, they do have uh, some design goals as well they want to tune each ship towards the role that it should fulfill uh, while feeling different enough from its competitors they also want to prevent any ship from being the best at everything as it benefits uh, as, as this comes with uh, benefits and drawbacks something that uh, we've been talking that's why they have these classifications medium fighter light fighter interceptor heavy fighter and so the outcome here is that most ships have been updated uh, in terms of how much uh, hit points they have on the hull and some items so more ships are going to be more different now some ships are going to have less hit points more hit points uh, certain elements like wings are sturdier and will not fall as easily so they've made the wings a little bit stronger that's true we've seen the wings falling off very often before and especially it's really annoying when you're flying in the atmosphere you don't have your wings anymore right and so ship parts uh, that carry many items such as the vanguard's engines nacelles are uh, also more sturdier which uh, something that uh, was one of the biggest weak weaknesses of the vanguard you know you lose your engines and then you just can't fly the ship anymore basically uh, as we already mentioned in the last 3.14 patch watch about shields and weapons man turrets now have also been significantly boosted oh yeah therefore we highly encourage you crew your ships together to test the man turrets performance and drop us your feedback keep in mind it's dangerous to go don't take a gunner with you yes i have experienced that as you can see with this footage the cutlass black is not that effective as i'm flying it alone plus people are gonna say irad you only why are you only using two guns that's because the other two guns are ballistic weapons <laughs> and i don't want to be using all of my uh, i don't want to be using my ballistics against those against those small ships so that's why i'm only using my energy guns and i would have been so much more effective with a gunner using energy weapons on the turrets too which i don't have unfortunately but uh, I will be trying this out with my brother uh, as soon as he gets into uh, open PTU we'll be definitely trying this out together last but not least the power triangle update here the team will be testing several behavioral differences that the various shield manufacturers types and equality levels can grant so they said that in star season 3.14 sheen have a, shields have a varying degree of damage hardening bonuses that can automatically uh, be applied if the power triangle is directed towards the shields so if you want to have those uh, extra shields you're gonna have to move the power triangle towards the shield so that more energy uh, gets um, gets uh, gets assigned to those shields on the other hand if you tweak the power triangle towards weapons you'll be rewarded with slightly higher weapon capacitors output giving you more loaded energy weapon shot yes i've tried that but the problem is that the shields don't regenerate when you do that <laughs> any assignment on thrusters will slightly reduce the cost of boost allowing you to stay uh, to, to speed longer the more you adjust the power triangle toward one direction the greater the advantage will be but at the same time the greater the disadvantage will be on the uh, other elements as well following the implementation the team will be looking at more options for behavioral differences to give you more versatile energy management gameplay when interacting with ship components again please test these changes and let us know how they play i like it very much uh, i think that this is more on par with other games that um, that, that, that 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 can be played around it's funny because on my other channel the eradicators i'm playing a lot of no, TIE Fighter, it's crazy, right? TIE Fighter Remastered, not Remastered, TIE Fighter Total Conversion for X-Wing Alliance. You can check out the, the footage right here. And even playing this game, we do also have the Power Triangle, Managing Shields, Energy, 
uh, engines. So it's, it's not something new. This is something that has been present in games for a very long time, and it's finally making its way into Star Citizen. It's making, uh, it's making flying. You know, you have to fly with strategy. You have to strategize your next move. You are, you have to really. Uh, know how your ship is working in order to get the best of it. That's what the those capacitors and the power triangle is bringing to Star Citizen. I love it in every other game where this kind of gameplay is present and I'm loving it here in Star Citizen as well. So that is really moving toward the right direction. But please let me know in the comment section down below guys. This is the giveaway question. This month I'm giving away a Gatak Raylan with LTI. All you have to do is to subscribe to this channel and answer my question right here. Uh, how do you think the power management should be improved? What kind of feedback would you give CIG right now regarding the, the power triangle? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, thanks to Uncle Funk, Machimina and Dragon Ghost who are sponsoring the giveaway on Discord. I'm giving away a lot of things. We have seven prizes, a G12 with LTI, three sets of grey card armor, uh, $25 RSI gift cards and two sets of $10 RSI gift cards. These are on um, on Discord. If you are a Patreon and a John Button member, you should have access to my Discord channel too. That's all for this video, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more content on the channel. This is The Eradicator. I'll see you guys later. And a big shout out to Tala for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for your contribution on Patreon. This video is brought to you by the people who support this channel on Patreon and via the join button as well. Supporters of the channel get access to lots of cool perks such as access to my private Discord, your question answered in the show, you get to know when I'm going to play, and also you get to have a chance to influence the editorial line of the channel. Any help is appreciated, starts at just a dollar a month. Thank you very much for watching. This is The Eradicator, and I'll see you guys later.